grade 12 sequences in series. We are familiar with the idea of an arithmetic mean. A geometric mean just means that we are going to put some numbers in between in order that all of our numbers form a geometric sequence. So here we are asked to put two geometric means between 11 and 88. What that means is that we want to find two numbers that we can put in between there, between 11 and 88, so that all of our numbers form a geometric sequence. Right, what we do know is that this number over here is going to be A, and this term over here is actually going to be T4. All right, that's the first term, the two that we're trying to find. So two, three, four. Right, remember our formula, Tn is AR to the N minus one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our 88 over here. A is 11, R to the three. We're gonna divide both sides by 11 here and we get eight is R cubed. We're gonna raise both sides to the power of a third or find the cube root. All right, and we get r equals 2. If r is 2, and our first term is 11, the next term is going to be 22. The next term, if we multiply that by 2, is going to be 44. And we should get a warm, fuzzy feeling inside, because when we multiply 44 by 2, we get 88. And there's our four numbers, right, which form a geometric progression. And these are the two arithmetic, sorry, two geometric means that we've put in the middle there. Let's try another one. This time we're going to insert three geometric means between 80 and 5. So we're going to have 80, then we're going to have a, a geometric mean, another one, another one, and then 5. What that re results in is that this is A, and this here is actually the fifth term of our sequence, T5. Remember our formula, Tn is AR to the N minus 1. So 5 is going to be 80 times r to the 4. Let's divide both sides by 80. We actually get 1 16th, and that's r to the 4. Now, remember that when we've got a, an even power, we could have plus or minus. So in fact, what do we get here is we get r is plus or minus a half. Let's look at the two options that exist. If we start with 80 and r is a half, our next term will be 40. When we multiply 40 by a half, we get 20. When we multiply 20 by a half, we get 10. And when we multiply 10 by a half, we get 5. It fits perfectly. Okay? Let's look at the alternative. If r is negative a half and we start with 80, when we multiply 80 by negative a half, we get negative 40. When we multiply negative 40 by negative a half, we get 20. When we multiply 20 by negative a half, we get negative 10. And when we multiply negative 10 by negative a half, we get 5 again. All right, so there's two possibilities, both of which work. Right, as we did previously, we will also encounter kind of real-life examples. So here we've got an example where money is earning interest at 12% per annum, right? And we want to find out how long, how much money will there be after 10 years? So let's just understand that when we multiply, when we add 12% to 1,000 Rand, we're actually going to multiply it by 1,12. That shouldn't really surprise us because this is 112%. Right, 1,12 as a, as a percentage is actually 112%. And so we're finding 112% of 1,000 Rand. And that's growing it by 12%. Then what happens is it earns interest again. So in other words, we're going to take this amount and we're going to multiply it by 1,12. So in fact, our second, our third term rather, is going to be, uh, we'll just look at that now. It's actually going to be 1,12 squared. Right, we're just going to be a little bit careful here. This is in fact... We're going to start off at the end of year one. That's how much money we're going to have, right? Because we would have had one year's worth of interest. End of year two. End of year three will be 1,000 times 1, 1, 2 to the 3. Right. 
So now we want to know how much will I have after 10 years? So T10, let's write down our formula first. Tn is AR to the N minus 1. So in fact, T10 is going to be One thousand times one comma one two times one comma one two. This is my a value. That's all. All that a value there. My r value is one comma one two, and I must raise it to the power n minus one. So in fact, it will be ten minus one. It will be nine. And when I work all of that out and I round it off to the nearest cent, I get three thousand one hundred and five rand and eighty five cents. Okay, here's another example. A radioactive substance loses 8% of its matter each year. What will, it, what will a sample of 5 kgs weigh after 15 years? Now, to remove 8%, so it should say removed, it should say to remove 8%, we're going to multiply it by 0.92 because we are finding 92% of that number. Right, so... At the end of the first year, it will weigh 5 kgs times 0.92. We could work that out, but we don't actually need to right now. Then, at the end of the next year, it will weigh that amount with 8% taken off it. And the way we take 8% off is we multiply by 0.92 again. So it's going to be times 0.92 times, 0, times another 0.92. So it's going to be 0.92 squared. At the end of the third year, it's going to be 5 times 0.92 cubed and so on right we want to know what is it going to weigh after 15 years here's the formula tn is a r to the n minus 1 so t15 is in fact going to be 5 times 0 comma 9 2 that's my a value all right all of that is my a value there it is my a value all right and i'm going to multiply that by my r value which is not common on two to the power of 15 minus one and that all comes to 1431 one so one four three one and comma four three one kilograms okay if one, if one uses uh, grams, then obviously it would be uh, 5,000, and we would get 1,431. 1, 1,431 kilograms. Right, now these two questions are quite tricky, but they actually involve both arithmetic and geometric sequences. So let's just read this first one carefully. It says, these terms, 2, then x, then y, then 9, are such that the first three of them form an arithmetic sequence. So what we're saying is that 2x and y are in arithmetic sequence. Sorry, arithmetic. Okay. Whereas the last three, x, y, and 9, on geometric and the question asks us to use that information to find x and y right from the screen statement the fact that 2x and y are in arithmetic sequence we can build an equation because this one minus this one must be the same as this one minus this one in other words x minus 2 must be the same as y minus x right We'll simplify that green equation just now. But from the orange one, because they're geometric, we know that y divided by x must be the same as 9 divided by y. So we've got these two equations. We've got a green one and an orange one. I'm calling the green one number 1, the orange one number 2. From number 1, we can actually simplify it if we add x to both sides. Number 1 can actually rearrange into y equals 2x minus 2. 
trick that we learned for clearing out fractions. If we multiply the top by the bottom, we get the same as if we multiply the top by the bottom. So we can straight away clear out those fractions in number 2 to get that y squared is the same as 9x. Now we want to solve these two equations simultaneously. This time we're actually going to substitute. So we're going to write down this, this equation, y squared equals 9x. But instead of writing y, I'm going to write what y equals. And we know that y is the same as 2x minus 2. And once again, I'm going to say, halal. The reason being, I've only got one variable. Hopefully, we're good enough to be able to solve for this variable. So let's expand this. Remember when we expand a binomial, we square that thing, 4x squared. We multiply these two bits together. We get negative 4x, and then we double that, so it's negative 8x. We square the minus 2, and we got 9x. This is a quadratic equation. I'm now I'm going to subtract the 9x from the 9x from both sides, and I get 4x squared minus 17x plus 4 equals 0. I'm now I'm going to try and factorize this. I'm going to put a 4 here, 4x here, and a 1x here. Both sides are going to be the same to give a positive product. And in fact, they're both going to be negative. Right? And what I end up with is a bit of a process of trial and error, but 4x minus 1, x minus 4. So x equals 1 quarter. Now, if x equals 1 quarter, Right, remember that y is 2 lots of x minus 2. So 2 lots of a quarter minus 2 right, is in fact negative 3 over 2. So if x is a quarter, y is negative 3 over 2. And if x is... 4 y is 6. So let's look at the two sequences which, re which result here. If x is a quarter and y is negative 3 over 2, we get 2 is our first term, then a quarter, then negative 3 over 2, and then none. And we can see, in fact, that there's a common difference between these two, right? Um, and there's a common ratio. If we go that divide by that, we get the same as that divide by that, right? The other one's actually slightly easier to see. It goes 2, 4, 6, 9. These first three are in arithmetic sequence, that's fairly easy to see. 2, 4, 6, we're growing by 2 each time. And these last three are in geometric sequence. If we take 6 divided by 4 and 9 divided by 6, we get exactly the same answer in, in each case. But the last question that we're going to look at today, and it's a tough one, all right, says that if this is an arithmetic sequence, show that x, y, z is a geometric sequence. Now we're going we're gonna to do this almost slightly from behind. If this is true, if x, y, z are in geometric sequence, then we would know that y over x is equal to z over y. right? And that's in fact where we want to get to. We want to show that y over x is the same as z over y. The only fact that we know is that this is an arithmetic sequence. If it's an arithmetic sequence, then this term minus this term must be the same as this term minus this term. So that's our starting point. So 1 over 2y minus 1 over y minus x is going to be exactly the same as 1 over y minus z minus 1 over 2y. Right, and this is quite tricky because it gets into some algebraic fraction stuff. We're going to use a common denominator of 2y, y minus x. 
And on this side, we're going to use a common denominator of 2y, y minus z. Right. The bottom of this fraction needs to be multiplied by y minus x, so the top must be multiplied by y minus x. And the bottom of this one by 2y, so the top by 2y. This one, the bottom is getting multiplied by 2y, so the top must be multiplied by 2y. And here, the bottom is multiplied by y minus z, so this must be multiplied by y minus z. Right, it's looking quite scary, but if we just keep calm and keep our wits about us, the left-hand side simplifies to negative y minus x over 2y, y minus x. Right-hand side simplifies to 2y minus y is y, minus minus z, y plus z, over 2y, y minus z. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2y. And what we'll see, and remember it's absolutely fine to do that to both sides of an equation, right, I'm multiplying by 2y, which is the same as 2y over 1. What we'll see is that in fact, the two y's can disappear on the denominators. So what we've now got is we've got negative y minus x over y minus x equals y plus z, y minus z. And remember that if we've got two fractions equal, the top of this one times the bottom of this one will be the same as the top of this one times the bottom of that one. So what we get to now is we get negative y minus x multiplied by y minus z. That's the top of this times the bottom of that. And that is equal to the bottom of this one, y minus x, times the top of this one, y plus z. Right, and if we simplify all of this out, we end up with negative y squared minus xy plus zy minus xz, sorry, plus xz equals y squared minus xy plus yz minus xz. Right, now if we take a look, what we've actually got here is that this term over here is exactly the same as that term over there. So if I add an xy to both sides, those disappear. Here I've got a yz, and here I've got a yz, a zy and a yz, same thing. I'm going to subtract those off both sides, right? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add y squared to both sides, so I'm going to end up with 2y squared on this side. And I'm going to add an xz to both sides, and I get 2xz. I'm now going to divide both sides by xz, and I get that y squared equals xz. Now, if y squared equals xz, then I can take that, and I can actually divide both sides by an xy. Right. If I do that, I'm going to get... So I'm going to divide both sides by, I'm going to get y over x, let's just check that this is the same, y over x is z over y, right, y squared equals, sorry, that one drive, this is not x, y, this is in fact x, z, right, so, so look, y squared equals x, z, now if, I've got this situation, then x, y, and z are in geometric progression. Okay, because y divided by x is the same as z divided by y. Now, that's a really, really tricky question. Not necessarily expecting you to be able to do that. But uh, just interesting to see how we can use all of our algebra that we've learned so far. Right, that brings us to the end of this lesson.